Hello viewers. Welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Time to enter the world of civil engineering. Here we will learn about different concepts related to civil engineering. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more new updates. In today's video we are going to discuss about Structure Engineering Introduction to Cables Cables Introduction The Golden Gate Bridge is an iconic structure that utilizes cables to carry loads. See figure below. Such cables are routinely used in bridges and other types of structures for load transfer. This lecture video provides an introduction to the analysis of cables. As shown in the figure above, the Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge. Its deck is suspended from a pair of main cables using a series of vertical hangers. This arrangement allows most of the bridge load to be transferred to the main cables, which in turn transfer the load to the towers located at the ends of the bridge. In a scenario like this, given the close proximity of the hangers, we can assume that the main cables are subjected to add a tribute load. Furthermore, since the weight of each cable is insignificant compared to the load it must carry, we can neglect the cable's own weight when we analyze the system. A line drawing illustrating one of the bridge's main cables is shown in figure. Let's now consider the pedestrian bridge shown in figure below. Note how the surface of the bridge deck follows the geometric shape of the cable. In this case, we can conceptualize the entire system as a sable hanging freely from its ends, carrying its own weight. This is similar to the, the behavior of the cable shown above is similar to the behavior of a power line hanging from two supporting transmission towers, see figure below. It is important to note that the difference in the shape of the cables, when an external load is hanging from it, such as in Golden Gate Bridge, as opposed to when the cable is freely under its own weight, like it does in the suspension bridge, pedestrian bridge. You may be wondering, how the two scenarios differ, the differences in the mathematical equations, that defines the shape of the cables. If you are thinking, why we should care about the difference, because the shape of the cable affects, its analysis. Before we go further, we should make a distinction between a weightless cable supporting a linear load and a sable carrying only its own weight. The two cables we just described differ in their shapes, when a sable carries a linear load distributed along the horizontal axis, e.g. the main cables in the Golden Gate Bridge. Its shape can be defined using a parabola. On the other hand, when a cable hangs freely under its own weight, e.g. the Charles Kuanan pedestrian bridge, it takes the shape of a catenary. Let's examine this difference more closely. 
Consider the cable shown in figure below. Here is the cable suspended from its two ends, this configuration resembling that of the Golden Gate Bridge. For this cable, we are assuming that the bridge deck is exerting a uniformly distributed load of W on the cable along the x-axis. Assuming that the origin of the coordinate system at the lowest point of the cable, we can draw the free body diagram of the segment just to the right of the origin. The free body diagram is shown in figure below. In the above diagram, T. 0 is the tension force in the cable at its lowest point. Tis the tension force at the right end of the segment, and a denotes the angle that the cable makes with the horizontal axis at its right end. Since the segment has to remain in equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the horizontal and vertical directions must be zero. Therefore, we can write two equilibrium equations, as shown below. Summation, F X equals zero, T cos A equals T Zero equation one Summation, F Y equals zero, T sin A equals W times X equation two, dividing equation two by equation one, we get the following T sin A slash T cos A equals W times X slash T zero tan a equals w times x slash t zero equation three since tana can be expressed as the change in a with respect to the change in x i.e. dy dx equation three can be rewritten as follows dy dx equals W times X slash T zero equation four this first order differential equation can be easily solved for Y let's rewrite equation four as shown below dy equals W times X times DX slash T Zero equation five. Applying the integral operator to both sides of equation five, we get the following equals x dx y equals w times x two slash two t. 0 plus C equation 6 boundary condition at X equals 0, Y equals 0. The integration constant, C, in equation 6 can be determined using a boundary condition. In this case, we know that at the origin, where X equals 0, Y is also 0. Substituting zero for Zandji in the above equation we can determine C. Y equals W times X2 slash 2T. Zero plus C, zero equals W times zero slash 2T. Zero plus C, C equals 0 equation 7 therefore, 
equation 6 can be written as follows. Y equals W times X2 slash 2T. 0. Equation 8 Equation 8 is a parabolic function that describes the shape of the cable. Therefore, when a symbol is subjected to linearly distributed load, its shape can be defined using a parabola. Now, let us consider a symbol hangs freely under its own weight. Consider the cable shown in figure below. Note that the weight of the cable is not distributed along the x-axis but rather along the arc length of the cable. Let's place our origin at the lowest point of the cable just like we did before. The free body diagram for the segment of the cable to the right of the origin is shown in figure. Note that the weight of the cable is not distributed along the x-axis but rather along the arc length of the cable. Let's place our origin at the lowest point of the cable just like we did before. Note that the arc length of the segment in the figure above is denoted by S. We can write two equilibrium equations for the free body diagram shown in figure as follows. Summation, f x equals 0, t cos a equals t. 0 equation 9, summation, f y equals 0. T sin A equals W times S equation 10, dividing equation 10 by equation 9, we obtain equation 11. T sin A slash T cos A equals W times S slash T. 0. Tan A equals W times S slash t 0 equation 11 since tan a dy dx equals w times s slash t 0 in order to solve the above differential equation we need to replace with x and y we can do this using the Pythagorean theorem. Note that ds can be viewed as the hypotenuse of a right triangle with height dy and base dx. Therefore, we can write the following, see the below equation 12. Equation 12 If we take the derivative of both sides of equation 11 with respect to x, we get the following equation. See the below equation 13. Equation 13 Substituting equation 12 into equation 13, we get the following second order differential equation. Equation 14 When solved, the above equation yields the following solution. Equation 15 The above equation is that of a catenary. It is used to describe the shape of a cable hanging freely under its own weight. This is the function that describe the shape of the cable suspended under its own weight, this is not a parabola, it is a transcendental equation, called a catenary. To summarize, when analyzing cable systems subjected to distributed loads, 
depending on the source and nature of the loads, we may have to use a different mathematical function to describe the shape of each cable. This video deals with the analysis of such cable systems. Let us start with a simple example. Consider a weightless cable spanning a distance of 10 meters between two poles. Attached to the cable are two traffic lights. The traffic lights cause the cable to settle, forming three straight segments, see figure. Dot each traffic light weighs 400 newtons. The two lights divide the span of the road into three equal distances. AB, BC, CD due to the symmetrical placement of the lights and the position of the cable, we know that points band displace downward the same amount. When measured, the vertical distance from the top of each pole to points bands is 0.6 meter. We want to determine the tension force in each segment of the cable. The solution for this problem is rather straightforward. Let's start by drawing the free body diagram of the cable. As depicted in figure below, there are two support reactions at each end of the cable. Therefore, the three static equilibrium equations can be written as follows. Summation, F, X equals 0 D, X A, X equals 0. Equation 1 Summation F Y equals 0 D Y and A Y minus 400 400 equals 0 Equation 2 Summation M at A equals 0 10 D Y minus 400 times 3.33 minus 400 times 6.66 equals 0. Equation 3 Using equations 2 and equation 3, we can solve for the vertical support reactions, i.e. A, Y, and D. Y. However, the horizontal reactions, i.e. D, X and A, X, cannot be determined from equation 1 since it has too many unknowns. For this problem, however, we can determine the unknown forces without resorting to equations 1 through equation 3. Let's cut the cable in segment B can draw the free body diagram for the left side of the cable system as shown in figure. Since only three unknown forces appear on this free body diagram, we can calculate them using the static equilibrium equations. If we sum the moments about point A we get the following. Summation, M at A equals 0, 0 0.6 times T. BC, 400 times 3.33, equals 0. Equation 4, if we solve the above equation for T. BC, we find that the tension in segment BC is T. BC equals. 
2220 Newton. Now, we can write the other two equilibrium equations as follows. Summation, F x equals 0, 0,2220a x equals 0 equation 5 summation f y equals 0a y400 equals 0 equation 6 from equations 5a and d equation 6, yield, a, x equals 2220 newton and a, y equals 400 newton. To determine the tension force in segment a, let's draw the free body diagram for point a, see figure below. Since the sum of the forces at point A must be zero, the algebraic sum of the reaction forces must be equal to the tension force in the cable. Therefore, we can write the following equation, summation, F X equals zero T a B two equals two 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 zero two plus four thousand and two. Equation seven we find that the tension force in segment of is T. A B equals twenty two fifty five point seventy five Newton. Because the cable system is symmetrical, see figure below. We know that the tension force in segment C is equal to the tension force in segment AB. Therefore, we know that the tension force in segment C is equal to T. CD equals 2255.75 Newton. Below figure shows the results of the analysis and the tension force in each segment of cable. To reinforce the process of analyzing cables subjected to concentrated loads, let's consider a related example. Suppose the right traffic light is positioned 1.8 meters from the right pole which makes the loading on the cable unsymmetrical, see figure below. What are the tension forces in the cable? We start by drawing the free body diagram of the entire system. See figure below. Although we cannot determine all four support reactions, we can calculate the vertical reactions at on using two equilibrium equations. By summing the moments about point A we can determine D. Y is shown below. Summation, M at A equals 0, 10 D. Y minus 400 times 8.2 dash 400 times 4.1 equals 0. Equation 8, D. Y equals 492 Newton. Furthermore, by summing the forces in the Y direction, we can calculate A. Y is shown in equation 8. Summation, F. Y equals 0 D. Y and A. Y minus 400 400 equals 0. Equation 9 492 plus A. 
y minus 400 minus 400 equals 0 a y equals 308 newton to determine the tension force in segment bc similarly to the previous example we can draw the free body diagram for the left segment of the system as depicted in figure below the above diagram embodies four unknowns there are two unknown forces a x and t b c one unknown angle a and one unknown distance h one to solve the problem we need to know one of these unknowns let's assume that the vertical distance from point a to point b is 0.45 meters that is h 1 equals 0.45 meter now if we sum the moments about point b we can determine a x as shown in equation below summation m at b equals 0 0 0.45 a x minus 308 times 4.1 equals 0 equation 10 a x equals 2806 newton then summing the forces in the x and y directions we can determine the x and a components of t bc as follows summation f x equals 0 t b cos 2806 equals 0 t bc cos a equals 2806 newton Equation 11 Summation F Y equals 0 T B Xina plus 308 400 equals 0 T B Xina equals 92 Newton Equation 12 Knowing the x and y components of T BC, we can determine the tension in segment BC. See equation below. T BC2 equals T BC cos A 2 plus T B C sin A two equals two eight zero six two plus nine twenty two equals twenty eight oh seven Newton Equation thirteen Similarly to the previous example, to determine the tension force in segment A B we can use the free body diagram of point A, see figure below. The sum of the support reactions at A must be equal to T. A B. Knowing this fact, we can write the following. T. A B two equals two eight zero six two plus three thousand and eighty two T A B equals two thousand eight hundred and twenty three Newton To determine the tension force in segment C D, 
let's draw the free body diagram for point D. Since the sum of the forces at must be zero, we can write the following. T CD2 equals 28062 plus 4922. T CD equals 2849 Newton. The results of our analysis and the calculated tension forces in the cable are written next to each segment in figure below. As we demonstrated in this lecture, when subjected to concentrated loads only, the analysis of cable systems involves applying the static equilibrium equations to different segments of the system while keeping in mind that no more than three unknowns should be present in any segment. We will continue our discussion on cables in the next video. For now, see if you can solve the following problems. Problem A. Determine heights H. 1 and H. 2 in the cable system shown below. Problem 2. Given that tension in segment AB is 130 N, determine weight W. Thank you for watching. For now, please subscribe, like, share and do not forget to press bell icon.